I'd like to talk to you about how it all started. Aunt. Oh, that's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. that, that's uh, 1929 mm -hmm. is when I first start studying accordion. And I was, that's in Norway, Michigan, where but I was born. not Norway. <laughs> not Norway, but Norway, Michigan. Uh, most people think, uh, naturally, when I say Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, but my parents did come from, from, uh, from Europe, from mm -hmm. Belgium. The uh, gentleman that's in back of my, that bottom uh, photo there mm -hmm. is uh, with the two accordions. That's the first trip that I made to, uh, to Hollywood uh, in 1932. I was 12 years old at that time. And through my accordion teacher, he had been on what you call the Orpheum circuit, you know, on stage. Mm -hmm. He came back to near my hometown and started the tire traveling and started to teach. So I, he, that's where I start really learning in, in, when I was nine years old. Were your mother or father a musician? No, they weren't. I understand that uh, on a Victrola many years ago, mm -hmm. they, they played a little bit of uh, a record and, and I heard it and I and that evidently thought gee I'd like to be able to play an instrument and that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And then you made a trio. Yes, uh, that's when I we moved to Chicago uh, during the depression and uh, I start playing myself in, in uh, oh in taverns and things of that sort and uh, then I, the, my first trio was uh, accordion, bass and guitar. That was the first trio, and that, that basically started while I was still in high school, like around 1936, 37, and 38. Mm -hmm. Long time ago. That's a long time ago. Yes. But uh, the quintet, that's the most famous part of it, perhaps. Yes. Uh, I made a, a change in the, uh, in the trio uh, at one time. Instead of bass and guitar, uh, I had hired uh, another... I liked vibraphone very much with accordion, and so I, I, uh, I eliminated... Uh, the guitar and put the vibraphone in and so uh, for a while I just had accordion vibraphone and bass and then we were fortunate to have somebody hear us and we, we got a very very nice job in Chicago at one of the big hotels and the gentleman says uh, I, I would like what you do but will you add drums so that's that's how that started and then the while we were there in, uh, in 1944, uh, unbeknownst to me, NBC was looking for a group and they came down and heard my group and they signed us uh, to a contract at NBC. And then at, in, in uh, about 1945, uh, I asked if I could add guitar to the, the group and that's how the quintet basically started, about 1945. The accordion has a long, undistinguished history in jazz, and has it ever been fully recognized as a jazz instrument? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, supposedly, uh, I was the one person that started that. Uh, I became interested, come, I, I studied all the regular accordion thing, the classical and the ethnic type of things. But uh, I, I start, when I was in high school, I started hearing like Benny Goodman. And I thought, why can't I play the accordion like Benny Goodman plays the clarinet? There was nobody to teach it. So I start listening to a lot of records, and I worked with different groups. I worked with a sax player at one time that was very, very good. That's while I was going to high school. So I did develop a certain style that was different. Uh, the, as far as it being in jazz and swing is concerned, my name was brought up. They, they had the downbeat. They had, they had that uh, accordion in there, and they had it for 10 years. And fortunately, because I was working at NBC, I, I won it for, for 10 years. But there were some other fine accordion players from, from uh, Holland here, Matt Matthews, very fine. Of course, there's many very, very good accordion players. But uh, it's never, there hasn't been that man, many, and, and people don't think of the instrument. I was very fortunate because when I worked at NBC, I worked with people like Dizzy Gillespie and, and Ella Fitzgerald because we had radio shows and television shows. When they came on the shows, I worked with them, the quintet worked with them. So I, I've been very, very fortunate that I know these people and they, I guess they respect me for, for what I do. But the average accordion player, when he walks in someplace to play, mm -hmm. they expect him to, to play something ethnic or polka, mm. so, unfortunately. So, th really, the answer to your, your question, unfortunately, is that to the general public, it's still not recognized as a jazz instrument. Mm. In your opinion, do you think that swing jazz has got anything to offer for young people? Oh, yes, definitely. 
Uh, but you see, you take swing jazz and, and so forth. Let's face it, since, mm -hmm. since the uh, uh, rock and roll time has come, al almost all different type of music has really taken, taken back, right? Uh, so there isn't that much available, unfortunately, in, in especially in the jazz. So it doesn't go just for any young people. That's any, if, uh, the elimination of the big bands has hurt the, you know, the, the musician that wants to play something different. But I think that it's starting to turn around a little bit. I, th I think that uh, things are looking much more better, even for all young musicians. Uh, I, I think that there, there will be a turnaround. I think the rock and roll thing has had its time. People, I think, are looking for something different for a while. Right on it. When interviewing a performing artist, you like to know the man behind, and this is the part of you. This is the part that I like now. Uh, I've always enjoyed naturally performing, but this has become a very, very big part of it. That's the reason why I'm living in the desert. I, I play golf. It's become a, a nice pastime for me when I'm, when I'm not performing. I enjoyed it very much. Have you got any other hobbies? Uh, almost all of them are in sports. I'm, uh, I think when I first started, I, I really would have liked to have been a ball player, been in sports more than into, into music. But uh, it changed, and I was very fortunate that I'm into music. And now I spend a lot of time uh, in sports of all, so all types. I read somewhere that you had one extravagancy, and that was sports clothing. Oh, clothing? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I think uh, as far as I, I like the casual type dressing. Uh, you know, when we first started, when I first started, and we worked nightclubs and everything, we were required to wear tuxedos at that time. I mean, so your black suits. And my, my experience on that was the strangest was one of the times that I came here and I had, I flew into Amsterdam to, to, to do a TV show and I, I was ready with the tie and, and, and with the jacket. And the gentleman, the producer said to me, uh, no, I, I want a sport, sport shirt on. And I wore his sport shirt and it was, didn't fit well. From then on, I've never worn a jacket. So you won't see me wearing a jacket. I'm, I'm, I like sport clothes very, very much. You made an enormous number of records out. Yes, I've been very fortunate. I started recording, like I mentioned, in 1945 for Capitol Records. And in 1967, I started recording also in Europe. And altogether, as far as albums are concerned, I've, I've done 42 albums up to this time. I brought one of the Capitol Records with you me. You did? Well, let's see what it is, let's okay? Please. That's all you're going to get. That's all? I've heard it enough. <laughs> you too. <laughs> what was it? Uh, well, it, that particular recording it was done around 1950, and I had recorded it originally. I wrote the, wrote the song as a theme song and, and on different radio shows that we were doing in television at that time. And uh, I recorded first with a quintet, and then they asked me to, to uh, write something also to record it with uh, strings, and that's what you heard there with the uh, NBC String Orchestra. So it was many, many people and disc jockeys that wrote to me uh, seemed to like it, the song at that time, and they also used it as a theme song, which I thought was very flattering.
you very much. Thank you.